G'day guys, welcome to G-Man Speaks. Today I have a video called Why I Stayed in a Sexless Marriage for Seven Years of My Twenties. And this is by a channel called Busy Becoming Myself. Original video is linked in a description, so please go check him out, sub, and also support his channel. So let's get started. Okay, before we actually get started, the reason why I picked this video, guys, is I think it will resonate with a lot of you um, at home who are either in long-term de facto relationships um, or, who, or, or who are married or have been married and can really resonate with it. I wanted to tell the story of how I ended up in a sexless marriage for seven years during my 20s. First of all, let me say that I believe that we are many people in our lifetimes and the person I am now is very different than the person I was then. I just feel that I've kind of inherited his memories. And I'm sure the person I was married to is a different person than uh, she was back then. I have no con. That's a really great point that he makes and a lot of people don't really touch on is that we are always evolving as men uh, growing and learning from experiences. And so, yeah, he did say a point there that really resonated with myself is if I was to see that guy who was uh, the good little boy, the married little uh, house cat, I wouldn't recognize him because as he said, I've, I feel like I've inherited some memories, but it was a completely different life. And as we learn, we can look back and be introspective as to why we put up with certain things in our lives. And I'm sure he's gonna to touch on that. Contact with her, um, you'll find out why. Um, anyway, by way of background, I was brought up to have very low self-esteem. It was a necessity in order to survive in my family because when I objected to my parents' dysfunction, I was punished for it. And my idea of what women should be like was shaped by my mother when she was, yes, pressured by my father, but, you know, exploding in unreasonable ways. So I thought women were, you know, my model of women, I wouldn't have called it unreasonable, but it was based on unreasonable behavior. So when I encountered that later, I was very accepting of it. I thought it was normal. Also, I was driven well, I was forced to be very good academically and to really push myself to perform no matter how I felt. So I could be having a horrible time with my parents screaming and me not sleeping well, and I had to do well in school. Uh, my whole sense of being the... I was loved more when I did well in school and kind of shamed when I did not. Uh, always compared to the guy at the top of the class and I had to be better. So I came from this environment where uh, I don't really take much care of myself. He made a really good point and I'm going to interject here but let him go because I'm sure he's got a, a telling story for us today. He said that the model of what he would believe to be expecting um, of you know, reasonable behavior to expect from women um, was to be uh, from his mother and he was saying that his mother um, was explosive. And so he's seen that and he thinks that that's normal behavior. Okay. And that's why we hear about a lot of men um, who are very accepting um, of things that us men in this space uh, think are pretty outrageous. They're raised a lot of the time by single mothers who indoctrinate them uh, how to not be men and how not to have boundaries. And then they end up in situations like this gentleman. Uh, okay, I was going to the gym from the time I was 13. So physically, I take care of myself, but mentally, emotionally, I didn't take care of myself. I didn't expect to take care of myself, and I didn't consider myself someone worth taking care of. And I had very poor social skills. I was from a mixed uh, cultural background. My mother is Sri Lankan, and uh, I'm just noticing the sun is going out. <laughs> okay, hopefully you'll still see me. I'll just post this later anyway. Um, my mother is Sri Lankan and she mostly raised me and my father didn't really have much input so my cultural coordinates was were very off. People found me rude and too direct but I thought that I was just being honest and being myself. So Hey, that's the best way to be, um, being direct. I'm a big fan of that approach as you guys at home would uh, know. I think beating around the bush... Um, Going around in circles trying to communicate is a huge waste of time. Obviously, when you communicate, you do it in a respectful manner uh, and tr not come across as brash, but be straight to the point. I think it's a good masculine trait.
So I didn't have uh, much social calibration, didn't have much success with women. And then when I am in, when I'm in my early 20s, I start to have a social life, meeting people uh, from the part-time job I'm working at at a supermarket after work. And um, I get together with a girl who is in that social group uh, and that's my first girlfriend. So I, I kiss for the first time, age 22. This is, a, I want to say, because guys, I have not watched this video. I watched the first couple of minutes, probably up to about here, okay? But you can tell already there are the signs um, of a man who's very inexperienced uh, with women. And the first uh, sign of attention he got from a woman, he's hitched his trailer to her without doing any sort uh, of due diligence or setting up any boundaries okay i can see where this is going to go already so he's already given us the preface that he was awkward he didn't have great social skills he probably wasn't well liked he didn't get any attention from women he's finally got it so he's going to be accepting of whatever he gets um in return from a woman to be able to hold on to that and then uh the relationship is quite turbulent and there are red flags like her lying big about little things and giving me ultimatums mm -hmm. for very small things like uh, wanting to do things on a different day or, you know, having different social priorities. Uh, but I thought, okay, no one else wants me. She must be the one. And also, like I said, I'm used to putting up with unreasonable behavior. That's a really good point, and I can already speak from my experiences too, um, is you get with a girl... Um, I can speak probably more so from when uh, I was I was married and things were going downhill. And you're like, well, I'm in it now. I'm married to this woman. She must love me. But this is just what marriage is because you hear, you know, you hear all those old jokes about marriage and ball and chain and all that. And you just accept it for what it is. Okay, you're copying all this um, very much unreasonable behavior that uh, if I was to uh, be on the receiving end of that uh, these days, um, it'd be straight out the door. But I put up with it uh, for quite a while. Okay. Uh, so I can really resonate with this guy. I'm sure that you guys can uh, at home as well, especially the point around, it's hard for most men to meet uh, a nice girlfriend who's gonna treat them nice or have a girlfriend who's gonna stick around with them at the best of times, but especially in your 20s, okay? That's the, I, I find you don't have much to offer. Uh, you're chasing women around like a little Jack Russell without anything to offer. You just wanna try and get some action um, and you're like a little puppy dog, okay? And the women are holding all the cards there. Uh, but it does definitely change uh, if you are uh, well put together uh, as you age in life and, and level up. Um, I can tell you that from experience, that's the topic for another video. But I can resonate with this guy. You feel like you don't have any other options, so just take what you can get. And there is a lot of sexual chemistry. We didn't have sex. By the way, I was also very religious at this time. I, had, I wasn't raised with religion, but I... Uh, had a Christian conversion when I was 16. And so the idea of self-sacrifice also really played into the mix here. But uh, I, we didn't have sex before marriage. We did kind of everything else. Um, and I thought, well, even if there are all these dysfunctions in the relationship, at least we can't keep our hands off each other. So things will be good in that department. And then as soon as, well, actually I was kind of manipulated into marrying. Um, I don't want to go into too much detail there, but uh, again, it, the stuff you're raised with can be continued by partners. Um, and when we get married, uh, as soon as, well, within the first few weeks after we get married, she starts withdrawing and becoming more distant and go, the sex goes from a few times a week to once a week to once a month to not even once a month to once every two months. This isn't anything outrageous. This probably happens to most men out there. I've been there before. Even when you move in with a long-term girlfriend or something like that, or a girlfriend, once they got the hook in, and once they get in, they don't have to perform, uh, and the true colors can come out because uh, it's just nature. They've done the sales pitch. They've hooked you in with the action, um, and yeah, they feel like they don't really have to do that so much anymore, and it's hard to remove them out of the situation you've, you've put them into by you know getting on rental agreements or getting married and putting them on a mortgage or whatever it is. It's like you're pretty hard to get out of that situation once you go there, guys, and this is very, very common. So you guys who have not done this, keep your eyes open and keep your ears open and listen through to this video because there's something to learn here for you all. And I'm trying to figure out what's going on. And she says, oh, I'm so tired from like having to travel one hour each way to work. So I move us to like five minutes away from where <laughs> we were living. 
uh, so five minutes away from where she was going to work, so she didn't have far to travel. I buy the best mattress I can find for like one thousand pounds. <laughs> um, and poor bastard. You know, I'm massaging her back and neck every night, date nights two or three times a week, whatever she wants. You can't buy desire. I've been there. This guy's been there. A lot of us learn that from experience. Once they, once they switch off on you, once once that sort of that burning want for your intimacy is gone or they're not respecting you or looking up to you anymore, there's no getting that back. You can't buy it back with uh, date nights and chore play or whatever they say. Oh, you know, if you go and, you know, you do the dishes or you, you clean out the dishwasher and uh, do the washing and make my life easier because I have to go to work as well. And if uh, you do all the chores and uh, maybe your reward will be a blowjob or something like that. A lot of guys fall into this trap. Oh, okay, yeah, I'll help you out because it shows I'm a good little boy. Okay, I'm a good little boy. And I'll get a reward. I'll get action. Everyone's winning. Uh, no, it doesn't, doesn't end very well because you're losing your masculinity by doing those sorts of things. And that was something I didn't do. I didn't do any of the chore play stuff. Um, I didn't really put up with um, any sort of demands, ultimatums, etc. That's probably why. Uh, I was uh, separated and divorced, okay? <laughs> but a lot of guys will put up with this shit and not push back on it. Wanted, she had. Like Louis Vuitton handbags, holidays to the Caribbean, and the whole weekend was based on what she wanted. And nothing I did made her happy. Nothing was good enough. And eventually, I go to a psychologist and say, well, my, my wife is wonderful. Like she, she cooks for me, she makes me tea. And yeah, that was my, that was my uh, basis of wonderful. And uh, I'm going to ruin my marriage if I keep on having to talk about it. Because every time I wanted to talk about it, uh, she would say, my wife would say, well, you've just set us back six months oh. because you've upset me now and i the more you talk about it the worst it's the worst it's going to get oh that is psychological abuse um but yeah guys this is a very common uh thing uh, that happens okay in marriages this is what you can get a lot of the time that's what a lot of guys don't know about they walk in they think they're going to get the girl that's giving them the action okay it's all on she's bouncing up and down on you you're in the car you're in the vn behind the cricket ground you wipe her up you move in all of a sudden you, you get a different woman they don't need to do that anymore, all right? Because generally women will lead with sex uh, to hook men in, okay? And women love sex just as much as men do, okay? Don't be, um, don't be sucked in by the, by the comments they make that they don't. It's just that when they're used to you, um, there's nothing really for them to gain out of performing. All right? If that real love, intimacy, burning desire is not there for you, they don't see any need to do it. They want to go and uh have a strong masculine man go and do that with them okay they never give up on it <laughs> they if they're not if you're not getting it uh, and they're playing this sort of stuff uh, you get to start looking around and thinking hey she could be out getting us somewhere else if she's behaving like that so this guy's the beaten dog he's been beaten down and a lot of guys get married and i liken it to think about like a dog and it's got a little rabbit toy or something a little fluffy toy and it throws it around and it slams it on the ground and it shakes it around and throws it up and it hits the wall that's what a lot of guys end up becoming because I don't want to push back because uh, he said something, there was a reprisal, okay? Once you're married, a woman, a guy say, well, use masculine frame, okay? Use masculine frame and alpha dogger and all this stuff. You cannot do any of that stuff when you're married. You are stuffed. You are locked in. You have no leverage. Been there and done that, boys, okay? If you start pushing and start pushing back hard or whatever it is, you know, it might not be about sex. It might be other stuff. They're going to walk on you. So you better be prepared for that too. Okay, a lot of guys don't want that to happen. They're like, oh, got the house, got the mortgage, got my inv- finally a good place in my life. Uh, everything's under control. Everything's pretty good apart from the stuff with the wife. I was put up with it. Or go and um, I don't know, cheat on them or whatever. What some guys might do, uh, go to hookers or whatever it could be. Watch watch porn or whatever. Anyway, guys, about halfway through the video. Uh, if you're enjoying the content, please sub to the channel. Aim for 10k subs. I'd be appreciated if you could help out. If you do want to support the channel further, check out my Patreon in the video description. Um, and also, guys, the best way to do it is to like, comment, and engage with the videos on YouTube. That is the best way to get me out there. The watch time and the engagement uh, will get my videos pushed. Cheers. And I have to talk about it because... Uh... I was feeling like I was the ugliest, most horrible person in the world. Even my own wife, the woman I love, won't touch me. I must be crap.
and that feeling of crap was a fuel uh, the feeling that I am a piece of crap was the fuel to make me work so hard to try to please her and she got nice material things from it and the more you work the harder you work the less you're going to get back it's like a, a sunk cost okay you're going to keep throwing money into the void if a woman switches off on you there's no pulling them back uh, a guy think oh she's just going through a hard time i've been there i've been there i've been through this exact mindset i know exactly how how it is oh she's having a hard time uh you know maybe, maybe she's stressed at work or maybe she's just not adapting well to the married life or whatever it might be she'll come good she'll be fine it's almost like a post-marriage um like partum depression type thing uh let us go downhill because maybe no not maybe the reality is they probably truly didn't want to be married to you they're trapped they're liking the life you're giving them okay but they're not truly into you and it's a very hard bitter pill for any man to swallow most men are in denial about it okay and it is a horrible thing to acknowledge and understand like i really started to understand that uh close to when i got divorced I was like this woman doesn't like me at all she wants nothing to do with me and I should have seen it a lot sooner, but you're like, you know, you're in, you're in the pot. You're like a frog boiling uh, day by day, a little bit more disrespectful, a little bit uh, less well behaved, you know, just obnoxious, whatever it is, uh, not not living up to their side of the deal. Okay. To, yeah, eventually, I got to a point where I was like, yeah, like this is going to end, and uh, and it did. Uh, but a lot of guys don't. They get completely blindsided. Okay. Oh. Uh, because you can't understand that's how they 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 work. They just switch off, and you're like, oh, we 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 promised, we had vows, and we'll love and cherish each other, support each other. Uh, when she married me, she must love me, or she used to have sex with me. Why does she want to have sex with me anymore? They're, for the for the type of women that are not attracted to you anymore, they're not gonna, there's no benefit for them to have sex with you because you don't turn them on, and they're not getting anything out of it because you're already giving it to them. Okay. It's a really sad state of affairs. It's a horrible position to be in. I've been there, okay? It is really bad. So young boys, young guys, young men, or men who are not even if you're young, you're contemplating getting married. Do your due diligence on them. I can tell you that much. Don't go rushing in quick. Um, and if they're bad when they're your girlfriend, it's going to get a hell of a lot worse when you're married, okay? I can tell you from experience, guys, you really need to be careful and more accountable and have a bit more balls about you if things don't seem right before you make these commitments. You end up like this bloke. You end up like, I, like I was in a pretty rough situation, not as bad as this. Um, a, a lot of other men, dead bedrooms for years, years, and I put up with it the rest of their lives because they don't want to rock the boat, they don't want to lose the house because you're trapped. And I know that sounds really strange for people who have more healthy relationship experience, but this was what I thought was the best I could get. I had no better reference point than this. Exactly. And I'm, I'm going to CrossFit at this time, surrounded by hot CrossFit girls, and I'm staying faithful to this woman who is not that fit and doesn't even want to touch me. Because I gave... And this guy here, he looks quite well put together. He's quite handsome, no homo. Okay, maybe a slight bit of homo, but he's a good looking guy, you know? Um, and then you get trapped with a woman that turns into a tub of lard and wants nothing to do with you. And you just got to pay for him to like a bill, a liability. Oh, it's like a fat, a fat uh, sack of potatoes, you know? A fat sack of uh, curdled yogurt, right? Uh, that you got to keep paying for every month and week to live, to be mean, rude to you emotionally abusive to you, uh, you stonewall you. A lot of guys experience it. They never talk about it, okay? I've experienced it. Now, my ex was very attractive, so she didn't go fat, okay? But I know guys, I know guys very close to me uh, who are in this position. And I can see it from the outside too, and they haven't told me, but I can see this. Very, very common, very, very common. I'm not going to say your wife needs to be hot. What I'm trying to say is you get this woman, uh, this guy's well put together, he's staying fit, uh, from the outside, he's a well-put-together guy with his good married life. He could have other women. He's locked in financially with the worst contract you could ever sign as a man. And if he plays up or strays, hell hath no fury like a woman scored or who feels like she's scorned. She's, he's getting nothing out of it. But if he was probably to go out outside of the marriage um, or other, outside of the marriage other guys do, you you look out. You watch out for the, uh, the brimstone, the fire and brimstone that's going to rain down from the skies, my boys. Because even if you're not getting any action, if you go and get it somewhere else, that's not going to be accepted. I know there's those um, uh, talking points in the in the space, and they say, "Oh well, uh, a woman will put up with a man going and having action with other women as long as he's high value." Or 
I haven't heard any more bullshit than that ever. Unless you're Genghis Khan, okay? That's not happening. Uh, I've never had a woman ever say to me, I'm a fine with you going and sleeping with other women, even when I wasn't committed to them. Once they sort of know you're doing that, they uh, get pretty nasty pretty quick. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. I gave her my life. I gave her my promise. And I thought if you work hard at something, then eventually it'll work out for you. And she told me she loved me and I loved her. So why wouldn't it work? Eventually, with the psychologist, I go from thinking, okay, this isn't working. Uh, maybe I need some space to, I definitely need some space to, I'm going to get some space and if she won't give it to me, I'll divorce her. So I filled out the divorce paperwork myself you, and uh, I, it's a very complex story, but in the end, she begs me not to divorce her. And so I start putting a separation agreement together uh, then she puts in a divorce against me, says I don't need to pay because uh, she's sorting it out. Then her lawyer starts chasing me for money. Though, so. Fun and games, boys. This is what you get on the back end. I've been there, done that. It is not fun. You boys in the comments who have, uh, number one, been in a horrible relationships that you thought before you put a ring on that woman's finger, you thought you were going to get something fantastic. You signed up to the deal. You moved him in. Uh, you became financially uh, tied to them legally tied to them you tell me how that ended up for you once it went to shit it is the worst thing ever i would never wish it on a guy uh no matter how much i despise a guy i have no enemies but if i even if i had a worse enemy i wouldn't i wouldn't wish this it is the most horrible soul-sucking uh experience you'll ever have in your entire life i i'm not uh, exaggerating this guys uh yeah guys put in the comments if you've been through it or are going through it or feel like you might go through it soon so I have to find a lawyer and then uh, she empties the house and goes to Las Vegas with our savings because wow. I found out that she was hiding money in an account at her parents' address and not telling me about it. Uh, so the whole separation agreement fell apart. And then there's two years of fighting, um, during which time I have no idea if, if my possessions in my house are safe and whether I'm going to be able to keep any of the earnings I'm making uh, and trying to rebuild my life. Poor guy. Poor and in the end, uh, after much reluctance on her part, I managed to get, into, get her into mediation and she finally gets what I offered in the separation agreement in the beginning. So after thousands of pounds spent on lawyers and a lot of stress and a lot of time, no better off. Complete waste of time. The divorce showed me what she was really like. I think you only see someone's true nature at their worst times. And... What was shocking for me was how, like, how can someone's whole life mean nothing to you? How can... This, this, this couldn't be uh, more true. I've been in this exact spot. I'm sure many of you guys who watch this content have been here. It's very confronting. It's very confronting to feel like once they, were you, once they were said and done with you, you were just a payday. And they were happy to go and do the worst behaviors to try and get the most out of you and hurt you as much as possible during a divorce. Like this guy, he got cleaned out, his savings are canceled. Oh, that, that, that same thing happened to me. And I've got, I'll, I'll pin my, my own divorce story in the comments for those of you who are new. Sorry, in the video description who are new. Very similar to this guy, brutal, brutal. I know how it feels, man. I know how it feels. It is something you'll never forget. You'll never look at women the same way again. You won't hate them. You might, you might in the short term when you've copped it, right? But you will just never look at them the same again as a value proposition like you did when you were a young man, thinking that you were getting something great. And you were happy to naively invest everything, your worth, your life, your future, your health, your mental health, your sexual health in, into a person who just didn't really give a shit about you at the end. They just wanted to be married or you know, they were just someone who were settled for you, okay? Happens a lot of the time, a lot of the time. It needs to be more talk about it. How can, how can someone's hopes and dreams be something that you throw away because you can make them feel bad and they'll buy you nice stuff? Like in three months in, I was Googling divorce and I said to her, look, if the reason you don't want to be physically intimate with me is because you don't find me attractive, please just let me go. I will make sure you're fine. I will send you money every month. Just tell me and it'll be fine. She said, no, I love you. I want this to work. And I had no idea about like this plan B in the background that she was like keeping the money aside. And like mm. that whole time, 
seven years. And the thing that made me hate her, and I went from feeling like, okay, this is a nightmare, I just want it over, to actually actively hating her, was during the separation, when she said she'd move out in a week or two, and I was sleeping on the floor. It took six months. Uh, I was sleeping on a yoga mat in another room so she could have the bed, and I was paying the bills, trying to be a gentleman. And... Um, the, that's where being a gentleman gets your boys. That's where getting being a gentleman, you sleep on a yoga mat with your wife on the floor. Now, I was sleeping in uh, separate rooms, um, trying to be a gentleman so my wife could sleep. But she didn't want nothing to do with me. Sleeping in separate rooms, separate bedrooms, okay? Being a gentleman, yeah, you know, that gets you. That gets you in divorce court. That gets you no action. That gets you completely disrespected in your life. All right, guys, I'm probably going to call it here. Uh, I don't want this video to go for too much longer. We're up to about 26 minutes. Uh, if you want to watch the entirety of his video, please go and do so. Uh, go and support his channel. Give him a subscription. I think it was good content for us to talk through. It added a lot of value to this discussion that a lot of men need to hear about. All right. I'll see you in the next one, guys. Thank you very much.